Mike of Van and Melodine, and well met indeed. I'm Marek here, Galadir, the head of the budding team behind of Hide and Conquer. And welcome back to the same as we continue and finish off this week's videos with Anduin. In our last episode, we took back Bjorn's tomb with a rather ill-fated attack, to be honest, but it matters very little now. The army in the north is to be supplemented, or has been, rather, yes, uh, with forces from Framsburg, and it shall swiftly take Yolstone and Mount Gleerwine. And then we have to hope that the dwarves, who recently reclaimed on Nazanar, will be able to whittle down uh, Gundabad's last army. Which I'm sure they will, to be honest, because over time, of course, all the auto-resolves will eventually defeat that force. Uh, in the south, we had the terrifying... Terrifying. We had the terrible news that Goblin Town has fallen to Khazadum, um, which is not actually all that bad. We're making money, so we don't necessarily need Goblin Town, and it now provides us with a staunch ally on our southwestern corner, meaning we can focus on Angmar through the gap of Litash, which is nice. Uh, Dolgaldor is pretty well penned in but sadly the ring has just been found in Dolgaldor which is a real shame because we don't want the ring because we're not going to bother with the ring script no way um but by taking Dolgaldor we'll get the ring if we do that um just to briefly mention and hover over Dolgaldor for a second that dragon flying around used to of course be a red circle but it was replaced by Rohur at some point with a dragon image instead of a red circle so that is all that is yeah, it's just telling you that the ring is in Dolgaldor. I think it might be for the ring one only. Uh, I haven't played as Khazadum, but when you play as Khazadum, obviously it circles certain places, and I, I wonder if it works for that as well. Um, but for now, I believe we are at an end turn. So first of all, as ever, let's just check that our diplomats and spies are doing what we want them to. Our army over here, Gleowine, who's essentially the, the de facto leader of our nation, even if he is not too sure, is heading to Dor Lingvar, where he will wipe Captain Lungor from the map. And we can then focus our attentions finally on, on hemming in Dolgaldur. We've got enough money, as I've just mentioned. So what we can try and do is Alaric, um, the goth, can form a little army here in Dwinburg, hopefully. He's got six turns maximum until he can get four more units. And then he can sweep down and take back Roscobel once and for all, which sadly has been upgraded by the orcs. And so we'll have a horrible aesthetic. Captain Rachilda is coming to join him, actually. So those forces alone will be enough. And that will be Dolgaldor done and nicely wrapped up. So let us end the turn and progress. Whilst the turn ticks by, obviously I am not in the corner this time. Um, the video with my face in was rather an interesting um, little experiment. Um, the overall opinion was totally divided, almost completely down the middle, with many people saying that the camera was far too distracting and that they did not want it. It didn't fit this type of game. Um, but then an equal number of people saying the camera was brilliant. It was nice to see things like the reactions that my face and hands do to the things that I am saying. Uh, and also, of course, many people were pleased to see Callie the Cat. Um, but of course, Callie the Cat didn't play ball all that well, did she? She kept moving around. Um, so I think the general con the there wasn't a general consensus was the problem. It was it was a almost complete divide. Um, so, but something that many people suggested after commenting after they'd seen how many people had commented is that perhaps every now and then we could do a video that has me in just to um, jazz it up a bit basically just to spice up the viewing but on the whole I won't appear in the videos uh, which is fine I'm not overly concerned I just thought it'd be, a, it'd be a nice little change and a wonderful little test to see what people thought of having the camera and also I wanted to show off Callie because I talk about her so much um, that it was nice to be able to show you all what she does while I record. <laughs> Although that is normally restricted to just around dinner times. She does like she's not sitting on the desk right now, for example. She's sleeping in the hall somewhere. But anyway, there we are. That is um the camera situation. Right, do we go for Yulstone or do we go straight for Gleowine? Yulstone has the largest oh well King faction leaders in there. Let's take it. Let's go and knock on the doors. King Grashuk. He's got two Orc Defender units, which is annoying as hell. Um, and then three. But this time our archers really will come in handy because this is a little crappy village map. Uh, so we should be able to rain fury down upon them all. Your courage, men. Um, the Total War Warhammer 2 Wood Elf campaign kicked off yesterday. And I have to say I've really enjoyed playing it. Well, I love Warhammer 2 so much. It's such a good fun game. Um... And particularly with the nations that I like. And the Wood Elves are one such nation. So if you're interested in that, it will release each Saturday. And um, just to expand upon, I feel almost defeated for for what I am to say. For I was destined, I was determined not to capitulate. But I just, 
I just can't record Skyrim for the channel. It, it, it gives me a level of anxiety I don't really want um, for YouTube videos. You may just think, oh, it's fine, Geller. All you're doing is playing Skyrim, and then we watch and enjoy it. But it's so much more than that. I'm constantly aware that I need to try and create a sort of compelling narrative from what's going on. Um, and that gives me a... a uh, I'm not, like, nervously shaking before I record Skyrim videos or anything, but it really puts me off recording Skyrim videos. And um, it doesn't help as well that they, they are um, wildly unpopular, if I can say that. Most of my videos hit between... Well, they used to hit about 5,000, they now get about 4,000-ish views. And Skyrim was getting, like, circa 1,000, maybe under. And so putting myself through a great deal of mental anguish to record those videos and make sure they're enjoyable... Um, was harder when you knew that not many people were going to watch them anyway. Uh, so that is my frank reason why I think I will just finally call it a day with Skyrim and I will hide, not hide the playlists, but I'll put the playlists uh, back down in the completed playlist section and then uh, that'll be that. I think I'll stick with Warhammer 2 if I want to do alternative content and um, DAC as the primary because DAC obviously is the focus of the channel um, Where's the cavalry over there? Dak is the focus of the channel, that goes without saying. Um, but I do like to do the odd other thing, just for variety's sake, really. Um, and I think Warhammer 2 aligns with the other bits and bobs on the channel so much more than any other game. Because it's, it's a fantasy total war, which is exactly what this is. Of course, the only underlying real difference is the lack of Lord of the Rings. But... Um, but I think it does line up much better. Ah, oh, what we should try and do is get those archers up there. Yes, 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 yes. Um, no, actually, we do want them to stay over there because the Fastrid has a really long range and I'm sure he's going to start shooting any second now, which he absolutely is. Um, and we need him to... We don't want to get too close. Also, look, you guys are basically just going to die here. So let's run you over there and move you two in a bit more coherent fashion. And those archers are hitting the raiders, that's nice. And here we are, the enemy's reacting. Right, the cavalry, you are going to be really pivotal here to get your javelins thrown when the enemy comes down this corridor. Might well speed it up a bit. How's things going on the other side? The enemy is approaching our defensive line, but that's fine. You're going to flank round and hit them in the back. And on the other side, the javelins are firing. Oh, that's nice. We have caught them in a wonderful little crossfire. Hit those mountain guard if you can. 53, they take losses. The thunderous sound of orc stomping feet. Uh, right. The archers should then back off a bit. Oh, that's a cool little building. A nice little hut. Oh, and it glitches through the ground. That's nice to see. It's levitating above the ground. Run away, run away, run away, run away. And you've done all of your javelins. Right, I want you to charge into the back of that unit if you can. Ah, they got caught. That's fine. Oh, the archers over here are not now firing. I want you to all shoot at those orc defenders, please. Turn and, and sort of trap them. Ah, oh, nice charging into the back. Obviously, we don't really want cavalry to be fighting spears, but there are only 33 of them. And it's not the end of the world. But then there are more units are coming through that are going to be giving us jip. Those orc defenders need to die, really. The mountain guard, of course, is the faction's leader. But the orc defenders have a far greater chance of giving us problems. Ah, the snow orc spears are retreating. Come back here. All right, charge into those and try and pin them in place. Stop them from getting too close to the archers. I mean, orc defenders aren't fantastic, of course. In fact, let's just have a look. I don't think I've checked their stats for a while. Five attack and a ten defense. That's nothing amazing. Um, I mean, by comparison, our uh, Veilsman, two attack, six defense. Five attack, ten. But, of course, they don't have a spear, so they don't lose the spear. Diva. Uh, somebody commented in another one of the videos saying, um, so spearmen, all, because I mentioned, and I have mentioned many times, that spearmen have a sort of hidden anti-infantry uh, anti, anti debuff. Well, they have a hidden infantry debuff, which means they don't fight against infantry very well. Um, and someone commented saying, so spearmen have an, already have a negative debuff against spearmen, 
uh, against infantry, sorry, and yet you still then also give them lower stats. That seems to then be a double debuff. But we don't give lower stats to spears. We give lower stats to pikes to counter their insanely overpowered attack animation. But we don't give lower stats to um, spears. So the Veilsmen having lower stats is because they are militia trash. Um, it's very much where the unit is within its roster. There are spear units, particularly for the Ardenaeum, for example, and Gondor have a lot of late game units that are really very strong. Um, and they are spears. So we don't debuff we don't um, reduce the spearmen's stats to make them even worse. Um, it's just certain spear units, obviously, are of a certain tier and wouldn't, and th they shouldn't be any better than they are. Right, cavalry combine onto those orc defenders. While the archers, what is going on here? Why are you standing? Oh, they have moved slightly, but they are standing in the way of the foresters, which is annoying. We just need to whittle that number down until it's basically just the faction leader, which is this bald fellow here. And then... Um, we can take him in melee then. How do we do against the defenders there? Yep, they're basically dead. And on the other side... Right, archers over here. Cease and desist. Let's get you to the middle and target those snow orc scouts. Our two units here, have, I think, will win... Snow Oak Raiders are down to... Yeah, the Snow Oak Raiders are going to be... They're going to lose just through sheer numbers. Which is fine. Alright, now, again, bring down that mountain guard. Just com continue to rain fury upon them, their heads. How are we diddling over here, fellas? Only four Orc defenders remain. This battle has been significantly more successful than the... Uh, <laughs> than the last attack on Bjorn's team. Uh, we'll go wide with you guys because they're Snow Orc Scouts, so they're going to shoot back. And Snow Orc Scouts are quite good archers, and we don't want to take too many losses. Alright, there we are. And this side has also done what needs to be done. So, cavalry, charge into those mountain guard. And let's run the archers round as well. And then we can just finish off the scouts with a volley. No, they're shooting back. There we are, we're all in position. Go, go, go. You guys are running round. Let's get you to run. Let's get you to go wide as well and run up here. The cavalry will deal with the leader, and the spears will deal with those last few units. So it's all about bringing down these scouts, who are not going into wide formation and are paying dearly for that mistake. But they've taken a large number of our archers out before they got there, though. But our guys are in position up on that hill. Fire! 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 Second wave then comes in. Oh, I love archers General so much. Ah, oh, yes, the faction leader's gone. Bones, and let our swords have his men. Scouts are down to just three. The and they are gone. The, the army is defeated. Is 242 vanquished. souls fell. Let all who remember this day remember it as the day of our most glorious victory. Now, we did kill over half of our own axemen, but I'm really not concerned because we... In their sacrifice, we were able to destroy an entire battalion of Orc Defenders, which is nice. But the Golden Sword today goes to Vale Archers. Very, very unsurprisingly. Second place, Vale Archers. And in third place, ah, they had Horsemen, interestingly. Very interesting. And there we have it. Now, hopefully, fingers crossed... It's supposed to be a drum roll, but it was rather pathetic. Uh, fingers crossed, that will actually wipe Gundabad out. Oh, I should just caveat this um, episode by saying that if I sound a little different, I can assure you I'm not unwell. It's just very early in the morning and I haven't spoken today yet. So that is... Um, because sometimes when I record early in the morning, people then um, post very heartwarming comments saying, Gallo, are you all right? You don't sound very well. And I'm gracious and, and, and grateful to all of you for your concern, but it is just, um, I always sound really gruff in the mornings. Right, Aeolstone does not like us, so we'll try and pop some standing stones with the money we've got. I probably should have wiped them out, to be honest, but um, there's only 400 odd people. And I didn't want to risk wiping them out. Oh, they have a, they built a militia garrison, that's why they got their uh, that garrison up. Everything else we can use, though, so that's fine. But sadly, they did not die. So their army lives on somewhere out there in the wilds. Their leader continues to fight. 
Um, I think we might leave behind those 65 archers. Because otherwise the tower might hate us. And keep them pinned. Keep them pinned. Dane's horse doesn't like me very much, which is a shame. Because we've got a general in there. Um, that's just... I'm sure that's just uh, cultural unrest. And also, Rackyberg didn't get a garrison. So there's a very real risk that Rackyberg is going to rebel. Um, should we send Galdor out with... No, Galdor, you stay there. But I'm going to harvest your forces and take them. Ah, oh, you're getting another unit anyway. So that doesn't matter. And then in the south... Ah, oh, no, we'd already moved Clearwine down. And Rakilda. But Rakilda should hopefully get to Dwimberg. Yes, before Afghaz does. So then Alaric can lash out. Oh, and with two more units as well. Fantastic. So Alaric and that army will move south and they will knock on the doors of Roskabel while Gleowine clears up the forces at Dor Lingva. And then we have firmly tightened the noose about the neck of Dol Guldur. Taking Dol Guldur itself, though, is never a joke. It is such a difficult battle map. Not necessarily because of the battle map itself, but because Dol Guldur gets something like six units of Orc defenders. It is a real, real fight. Which is what it should be. It's Dol Guldur for crying out loud. You shouldn't be able to just siege it with a unit of hobbits and call it a day. Um, there should be an, a, a challenge. Speaking of hobbits though, actually, let's um, try and get some involved because they are quite a powerful unit. So we'll send some hobbits as well. Ideally two units would have been good, but I, I just hadn't trained the others. But there we are, we can end the turn. Uh, thank you to all of you as well for your comments on the um, Warhammer 2 video with your advice and tips. There were many things there that I will take forward. Something that I will do in the Warhammer 2 videos though is almost certainly as we claim each forest region I am almost definitely going to name them after key forests in Middle-earth or Arda to a wider extent. <laughs> Um, because that's just what I like to do. Right. Dor Lingvar. Captain Lungor has attacked us. But despite the fact we're outnumbered two to one, it's it's feeling it's in our favour. But this is an orcish castle, which sadly means it's an orc encampment, um, which is not that great. But what's Lungor bringing? Oh, goodness gracious, that's why it's in our favour. That is the most trash-filled army I've ever seen. That is ridiculous. And the Wark Marauders is the general. <laughs> Alright, come on then. Come on then. We can absolutely defend this because those those units are just Snagger. They're little better than Snagger. Um, they, I think they might have poison arrows. The, or no, I'm thinking of the headhunters. I don't think those lower tier ones do. And what we definitely want to try and do here is get someone out to try and start harassing the enemy archers. They don't need to kill them. Just go and harass them. Our own archers, I'm thinking of building a line along here. Let the enemy come through and hold and let the archers fire from this hill. Because we've got a lot of archers. Oh, look at that. That's so fantastic. That is a dream, in fact. So you're going to go there and then each of you is just sort of going to plug these various different little holes. Um, because, of course, we're way down on melee forces. Um, we've got the general, though. We'll deploy him where necessary when the time comes. And you guys are going to charge out. Straight away. Get yourselves out. There we are. Now, if you can cause some of the enemy to come and chase you, that's brilliant. I'll take that all day, every day. Just run right away. Right to the corners. Ah, they've changed their mind. They're coming back with the ladder. Ah, uh, with the ram. So, Mirkwood Goblins are the ones we're not worried about. Mirkwood Hunters are the archers, and there are three of those. Curses. The enemy are battering okay, down don't fire yet, don't fire yet, don't fire yet. We don't want to get too close because we don't want to risk setting the, the wargs on us. Because those 20 will die to those wargs. Um, the walls are no longer ours. The enemy have taken them. Right, the enemy's coming through. But we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait. And then we target the warg marauders. I'm going to pause it, which is I don't normally do. Because if they can hit those wargs... A, we just want the wargs to die because they're probably the biggest threat today. Um, but also that's what I was hoping for the wargs might walk onto the enemy right, no, that, don't change up now though and attack what you want Merkwood Goblins there Merkwood Hunters there Merkwood Hunters there I didn't harass any archers in the end did I? Cavalry performed absolutely no role whatsoever <laughs> whoops our general will make such short work of these hob these goblin units. 
Merkwood Hunters there, Merkwood Hunters there. Yeah, change and hit the Hunters. Because there are a lot of them, and I've spoken about this many times before in, in various um, faction overviews. That despite the fact that um, Snagger Archers and Merkwood Hunters are trash units, real trash units, I mean, I can show you. 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0. There's still 163 of them, and so 163 of them doing one damage um, over and over and over, because they've got 20 odd arrows will eventually get some kills, so you do have to actually watch out. Right. Now our melee line is soon to fall. But we'll run these ones around this side as well. Um, to try and stop that uh, goblin unit coming through. But then the... Our archers will, will absolutely ruin the enemy here today in melee if they have to fight in melee. Right, pull back, turn and hit them. Go on, go on. Give us a right good charge. They haven't got any javelins anymore. Their spears are out. That is nice to see. There were 210 and in a solid charge it drops by almost a quarter. <laughs> Fantastic news. Right, you guys go and help harass them. The enemy generals died. So far, I'm not sure the skin changers have lost a single man. Right, you guys, stop, 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 stop. Don't kill our general. You can target these ones, though. I'm not bothered about those five Only dying. The enemy force remains. Run away. There we are. And then once you regroup, turn and hit them again. Nice. They're down to 60. Down to 26 and they're routing and they're routing. The only unit really left is the one that's on the ladders that didn't bother dropping them for, a, for some reason. Uh, we did lose a few skin changes in the end but we didn't lose our general and that's what matters. Right, pull further back and give our archers more time to fire on these goblins. If we continue like this, we will smash the They're shaken. Everyone charge into them. Yeah, I was going to say. They'll rout as soon as we hit them with that force of men. Capture as many as we can. Come on. The cavalry's getting involved. Good, 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 good. All right. So that's brilliant. So Gleowine can then hook up with this army. Alaric will come down from the north. And then we'll those armies two together should hopefully be enough to take Dol Guldur. 94. That's a little more than I would have wanted. Barely any own of our own kills. It as the day of our most glorious victory. But I'm sure most of our losses, if not all of our losses, came from enemy arrow fire. 56 Woodman Hunters and 23 Veilsmen. Although the Veilsmen obviously was just them dying in melee. But the Woodman Hunters died to arrow fire. But a solid victory nevertheless, and at least that army is now sent packing. Now, Dogledor does own a region out on the plains of the Wilderland. Um, I, I can't remember its name. Um, Burr, uh, Burr something, isn't it? On the southeast corner of Mirkwood, there's a town on the uh, under the eaves. Um, and I know Dogledor owned that. Oh, come off it. Will you sod off, you annoying bastards. <laughs> Pardon my French. Um, someone's going to have to go back and stop them getting Austin Guile. Which is just frustrating. But at least the Alaric army should now be a good to rock and roll. Brlarn. What a name. What a name. Yeah, go on then. What the hey? Um, yeah, I'll take a horse breeders guild. We get horse breeders guilds bloody everywhere. We do need to assess the guilds. That's something that's on the list. Is to have a look at guild rewards and um, essentially slow them down because you get guilds for basically everything at the moment. All right, Dane's Halls, you've got your Carpenter's Hall put up. Um, and can you now go for... Oh, the tomb is costly. Very costly. Is it the tomb that we really want here? Yeah, because it's cultural unrest. So yeah, get us a tomb up as soon as you can. That'll work wonders. Together, Your orders, we shall work we wonders. Okay, so yes. Gleowine, you're going to have to actually pop back to Austin Guile. And we can't move you out just yet. Rakilda can move through. The Hobbits 
we'll catch up on the next turn. And Alaric, the factionary, is going to come. He's going to take the lot. So Brlarn, you're going to hold Dwinberg and become the only garrison there. And you might as well chuck in another turn uh, for the money. Akbjorn will join that. That is a sizable army. A lot of Veilsmen in there, though. There's a lot of Veilsmen. And uh, there's a good, goodly amount of archers, and most of them mid tier as well, which is nice. So Gleowine's got to go back and hit Mosfell. Oh, Mosfell's brought nothing to the fight. This army can't really offer us much other than um, Lord Britta, to be honest. Oh, I didn't realise that was our faction leader. Ah, damn. So our faction leader and heir are fighting in the same arena. Just never advised. Uh, you look up with them, send them packing. Oh, Zagrat, come on. What have you got to offer the world other than your, the smoking ruins of your carcass to be used as fuel on our fires? Attack! That is what it shall be. It's Eowyn being a boss. Eowyn? No one says Eowyn. Eowyn. Alright, this is going to be a very simple and, dare I say, quite dull battle, I'm afraid, because we have a ton of archers. They have none, and we are just going to shoot them from afar. And we've got a couple of melee units in case it hits the fan. Start the battle. Right, if you can shoot, shoot. If you can't shoot, don't worry. The cavalry's going to go and get them to come and play ball. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, actually. We can get them to come and play real ball by pulling back at least to this sort of hill here. All right, so you're going to run over there. Get a nice wide line in front. And the cavalry's going to go in and harass them enough to make them run at us. So don't be on that for the moment. Goblin infantry. Mountain orc hunters, that's what we want to target. Although actually looking at their roster, throw your javelins whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. As long as we've killed enough um, to make them follow us all the way. 7% on those javelin throws. It's not bad actually, is it? Right, one unit's used all of theirs. Go and pull wide. There we are, they've used up all their javelins, so just pull the enemy back to our archer line. Our archers are already firing, which is nice. And there we are, we've triggered the enemy. Shouldn't have done that, really, because it slows the archers down. Right, now, I don't know why I did that either, because Cav, you're going to go out and be very important in our flanking plans. Move the line down. Go and flank, go and flank, go and flank, go and flank. If you could all target that mountain guard, because the cavalry will deal with these units that are attacking our general, attacking our line. The enemy are Come on, hit these. Oh, and don't run away. You're hitting those, you're coming in, you're hitting those. Oh, they're both routing. And then the mountain guard are bowing under the pressure of a thousand arrows. Four men remain. Three men remain. One orc remains. Zagrat himself. Who is going to get the win? Oh, let's go in and look at the sheer volley of arrow fire falling on this man. It's like Leonidas. <laughs> Down he goes. <laughs> oh, we lost 54. That's a little more than I would have wanted. And 30, 28 of the 35 Veilsmen died were our own arrows. That's ridiculous. So, hey, Op, we lost 54 men and 38 of them was our own kills. That's crazy. Oh, well. They're only Veilsmen. They are eminently replaceable. But, um... There we are, that's defeated the Outward Army, and now all that remains is the pitiful garrison of Mount Gleowine. And with the capture of Mount Gleowine, we shall be rolling in the dough. But that is going to be a story for another time, because of course that is going to end today's episode. So we'll send the army to go and besiege Gleowine, and then call it a day, and then I shall return to trying to get out of Platinum 2 in Apex Legends. 
So let's couple, get a couple of rounds and maintain the siege there. Yes. Within we find Radbug and uh, the most pitiful garrison you've ever seen. So we'll pro probably attack that to be honest. But we don't want to incur the wrath of Angmar too soon. Um, Dane Tools hates us. We've already discussed and covered that. The army in the south is in position. And next time as well, Gleowine will need to move round and hit um, Captain Mosfell. But then that puts Gleowine in a good position actually to A, cover these two whilst Alaric comes down. Um, and takes Roscobel back. Roscobel might be where Kamul is, actually. But then, as I say, Dolgaldor owns all of this. So they will continue to bring forces up from the south. And a lot of Dolgaldor's forces can train, in early, uh, can train early. So they don't need late game buildings. They don't need high tier castles. Uh, so they'll be, they will be a threat and a pain in the neck for some time to come. But for now, that is going to conclude today's episode. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode, along with the Warhammer video, and you aren't too disappointed that I am just going to finally pull the plug on Skyrim ad infinitum um, forevermore. Um, I, I apologise uh, for that. I do also hope in the week off after Christmas, I'm desperate to either do the top 10 pikes or to do the next faction law video. I want to do at least one of those things when I've got all that time off. Uh, but we shall see. Because that is only two weeks away now. But until we speak again, dear friends, Navarna den Pedamad Melonin, and farewell. <laughs>